So a little bit about me before I get started. Um, I traditionally work in the IT department at Ingham ISD. Um, I support a lot of our uh, academic initiatives, uh, one of those being Moodle. We host Moodle for about 80 school districts in the state of Michigan. And recently we pushed that off to a vendor who is now hosting that for us. So it allows me to work on projects like uh, the new Moodle social wall course format. I, being in IT, sometimes it's hard to relate to IT people. I am a real human being. I love to golf. <laughs> That's my second hole in one I've got over the last couple years. Um, I love to travel. Uh, my Labrador Retriever makes me walk her every night, and uh, that's our little future moodler there. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, about our presentation today, I'm going to share about our problem and our solution of our project, um, how to set up our course format, uh, how to use the course format, what we're looking at in the next version, how to get involved, and lastly, I've got a lesson learned about our project. So as our trainers around our local districts uh, helping teachers getting started with Moodle, we've run into the same problem over and over and over again. Moodle can do literally everything. It can do um, the quizzes that we were just talking about. Uh, we can do um, uh, track to see how confident the students are. It can integrate with Google. It can integrate with Office 365. We can do next generation assessments. And the problem with that is, Moodle is very complex, it's very robust, but it takes a lot of time to get teachers up and running initially inside the platform. Um, and it's just because it is so robust. And what's happening is, in the state of Michigan, is um, a lot of our teachers are getting overwhelmed during that training, and they're then leaving Moodle to go use one of our traditional LMSs that should not be named today. And what that results in is, inside of a class, inside of a school building, we'll have uh, one teacher using one LMS, another teacher using a different LMS, and maybe a third teacher even using a different one. So what we want is we want to get everybody in the same LMS to start with, and then as they get familiar with Moodle, that they can transition from a very um, light um, course format into a traditional uh, style of class. So what we've developed is a new course format called the Social Wall. It's got a simple interface if you've ever used Facebook or Twitter, it's gonna feel very um, familiar to you. It's also gonna be, feel very familiar to the students, so they're gonna know how to use it um, uh, initially. And the great thing about this is a teacher can get up and running within about 10 or 15 minutes of a training. So you can get them going within um, the first hour of your training session. So I had a question earlier, what is the social uh, wall course format? It's a couple things. One, it is a course format. Uh, we've also built out an alert block. Uh, we also have a filter URL resource and a backup helper. All of these are available inside um, the repository. Uh, to create a course, there's just a couple questions to ask you when you select the course format. Um, I always point out there's one option here, allow users to upload files and links. And so a student, uh, you can turn that on and off, and a student can either upload a file or not, depending on whether you select that um, as yes or no. There's just a couple questions there on how many uh, posts you want to show at a time. The next thing I usually ask a teacher to do is uh, to add the alerts block in the upcoming events block, and anything we tag as an alert is going to show in that block. So the main, uh, the main format is a timeline view, just like a Facebook page. Um, we can sort um, based on the mod types or if it's an alert. We can sort um, either in sending or descending order um, on when the post was added. And we have a couple things I want to show. Uh, if you want to add an announcement, a lot of teachers just like to you know, post an announcement of what they're going to do um, for homework for the night. So maybe you post out that you need to read uh, certain pages in the textbook. Um, it's quite easy to do, just using the, the post, a status, or a note. Um, some teachers like to do a little bit of a style to their announcement, so there is an HTML option. You can pop in and add um, some styling to your announcement. This time I you know, changed the color and centered it. It's pretty easy to start a conversation. Um, anytime you post an announcement or a note to the wall, uh, students can go back in and comment and like it. Um, it's pretty easy to do. The little arrow here is showing there's a lock button. So after a while, you may be like, all right, we need to shut off the comments on this. Um, the teacher can go and uh, click the lock, and it shuts down the commenting on it. In our research, we saw that a lot of teachers like to add videos either to YouTube or um, maybe the Khan Academy. So if you drop a link in there with a description, it'll automatically embed the video for you, which is pretty nice. 
if a teacher drops a link to a, an outside resource um, with a note on it, it's also going to do the auto linking for that. Uh, sometimes we want to, you know, drop a picture into the timeline. It's pretty easy to do. You you flip editing on for the course. You drag the image into um, the the post box, and it's automatically going to upload it. It's going to ask you whether you want to embed the image or just make it um, uh, an attachment. In this case, I actually did the embed, so you could see the photo. A lot of times a teacher wants to drop a handout to the whole class, so we made that easy as well. If you flip on editing, you can drag and drop that document, maybe it's a Word doc or a PowerPoint, right out there for the students to see. You can stack a couple documents out there uh, with a, a post, uh, a note, or a status update, and as soon as you hit that, um, this, the post button is gonna go out to all the students. Sometimes we wanna float an announcement to the top of the timeline uh, so it doesn't get lost, uh, so we have a sticky option. Um, it's either available in the drop down here, make post sticky, or if you want to make a, a, a post you already posted uh, earlier sticky, there is a button here that looks like a little thumbtack, and you can click that, and it's going to float that uh, post to the top. It's a great way to put an announcement out, maybe for the, the whole duration of the class. Um, so those are generally the, the features that our teachers like to see when they're getting up and running inside Moodle. Um, which usually leads to the, can I fill in the blank? Can I use a quiz? Can I post an assignment? Um, all those activities and resources are still available. Uh, there's a link here, it pops open a box where you can add in all your traditional activities and resources. Um, one of the nice things about adding an assignment, uh, this is a case where I went and added a, a sample assignment and I posted it out to the wall. The student goes in and completes it and once the teacher grades it and posts any feedback, it's gonna go back on the student's um, timeline with the feedback and their uh, grade on the assignment. Uh, students can go in and they can edit what type of notifications they want to receive with a link here, and then get a notification on each post or a digest. If I want an item to appear in the alerts box in the, um, that we added during the course setup, uh, there's a drop down that says uh, make this post an alert and that's gonna show in that alert box. It's a really great way to bring attention to a special item, especially as your timeline grows, uh, things can get lost over time. Like I said, uh, students, uh, they've got a view too. They can, using that course setup feature, we can allow them to upload a file if we want them to, or add a link. Um, otherwise, they can post announcements as well. We did a bunch of research when we were um, that led to this project, and we've got a couple of best practices we always recommend. Um, Moodle ships with a social course format out of the box. Um, if you can install this uh, course format, we kind of rec recommend disabling the previous one uh, to make it a little bit easier for your teachers so they don't get confused. Um, on our project page, which I'll have a link to in a little bit, uh, we've got some extra CSS you can drop into your theme that will help improve uh, the styling of the formatting of the box, the post box. And we always recommend uh, start a new course with a social wall. This is really meant to get teachers into Moodle and using Moodle, and eventually they're going to want to switch to a topics format down the road. Uh, so we really recommend this is for new teachers, starting with a new course. And the great part is uh, there's a topics format underneath the underneath the social wall. So when a teacher decides they want to go to a topics layout down the road, they can switch the course format back to topics and all their resources that they created will be in topic number one and they can reorder that um, to fit their needs down the road. If the teacher has been using for Moodle for you know, a number of years and they're really comfortable with it, uh, we, this is really not a good solution for them. They should keep on using topics or weekly. When we were doing our research around the state of Michigan, we um, noticed a lot of common themes. A lot of IT departments put in barriers for their staff. Um, so we recommended uh, the following best practices of one, set up a common authentication. Uh, so this will help your teachers and your students get into Moodle without having to remember a second password. Uh, a lot of districts are using Google now, which you can do a common authentication or Office 365. Um, Use a one responsive theme so that looks good across all of your classes. We were seeing a lot of teachers were picking their own theme and um, it was kind of making it difficult for the students. A lot of IT departments insist on making 
creating the courses for their teachers. Uh, you can actually set your teachers up as a course creator and then go and create their own courses. Um, it just removes one barrier for your teachers to get going. Uh, we were noticing a lot of districts weren't current with their version. I even noticed last year we had one district in the state of Michigan still running out of one nine. Um, and a lot of the districts we noticed were, uh, had a lot of performance problems because they weren't assigning the necessary resources to Moodle. So um, we recommend you know, making sure things are performing well and you have enough resources. So we have a couple ways to get involved. Uh, the first link is our project page. It has all the links to some how-to videos and how to, uh, to use the social wall, uh, some handouts, um, links to download the actual uh, plugins and blocks and alerts. Um, and then we got links to our support forum. Um, there's a direct link there to the plugin directory on Moodle that contains all the downloads. Uh, we've been trying to get the word out uh, across the US this year. We've been at the Michigan Moodle Moot, the Ohio Moodle Moot, and we're here today. Uh, we've been, got some good press from Moodle News as well as the Moodle blog a couple weeks ago. We have an upcoming release um, we're working on right now. Uh, we're gonna take our comments, we're gonna make them more threaded so we can have more of a rich discussion. And uh, one thing we noticed after we got done is we need a better ability to edit and reuse our resources once they've been added. So that's gonna be in the next release. Uh, one last thought, a lesson learned on this one is if you, I love this quote by Walt Disney, if you can dream it, you can do it. Uh, my friend Chris Kennyberg out of Dearborn Public Schools had this, um, this idea about two or three years ago to create this, uh, this course format because he was seeing this problem with his teachers. Um, and he just, he didn't know how to move it forward. So he started talking to me about this and then we just started talking to everybody we could find um, about this project. And um, about a year ago we found um, a partner to help fund our project. So I typically say, you know, if you've got an idea, start talking about it, blog about it, talk to your colleagues about it, and eventually it can come to fruition. Uh, we were end up funded by the Rumsey Association of Michigan, which um, is still funding us on our project, and um, we're really appreciative to them. Is there any questions about our course format? You mentioned uh, the, the notifications. Um, and I, I just didn't see it quickly enough. Other than so they can subscribe to the, all the postings via email, mm -hmm. or the other options? You, you get either an, an email on every post or a digest of it. Yeah. I really like the idea of, of, of an easy entry point for teachers into a blended environment. And it's kind of strange to ask this, but what, can you give us any insight on what the transition out of this course format into a more traditional topic state format looks like? <coughs> Yeah, so if you, when you're ready to transition back to a topics format, uh, you just go back into your course settings and you can flip it back to topics. And then all those resources you created end up in topic one. Um, so then you can reorganize it. Um, that, that will work. I kind of vision a lot of teachers would be like, that worked really great for year one with the social wall, but they're probably going to end up recreating it um, down the road anyways because they're just getting used to you know, teaching online and teaching the blended environment. Um, so, yeah, you can flip the topics and then reorganize it. And then can you flip back? Yeah, you can flip back. Yep. Over here. I think the course reset removes all of the, the post. And what we're working on right now is be able, the ability to reuse like a quiz or an activity. Um, we missed that in our original scope when we were working with Synergy out of the UK. Um, so right now we're working on to get that back in because we realize that teachers are going to want to reuse a quiz or an activity from year to year. So um, that's in our next release. We hope to have that done by the end of the summer. Another question? Is it possible to pre-populate your course with posts and assignments that you can figure out ahead of time and enable them based on date and time? So the teacher, if they are on a weekly vacation, they don't have to be there that is a great idea. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Version three. So when the instructor grades an assignment and makes a post back to the student, that it puts back in the timeline, is it only the student that can see that? Is it a private post? Yep. So each student will see their own grade and their own feedback. It goes right back in that timeline. 
Any more questions? Is there any kind of a customization? You said one thing through all that maybe like you've got 13 different schools and you're schools different color for the background or anything like that? Yeah, you want to keep it consistent for your students. I always use the grocery store uh, analogy. When my grocery store moves the, the package of Oreos on the, on the shelf, I get really irritated. So if your students have to c continually search out where things are in each course, that's where um, it gets problematic. So if you can keep things consistent for maybe a school building or a school district, um, that's the best way to do that. Um, just helps the students think about learning instead of where everything is at. We have a building, but I've got buildings that want to be different than district. So like this grade school wants to be different than district. I mean, I think the branding is a good thing to do for your school. You just want to make, keep it consistent throughout that, that building with the branding and the theme. Um, and that, that's the best case scenario for your students and your staff. Help reduce that cognitive load. Any more questions? I'll be down here if you have any, any more. Thank you.